But we still have to wait for that to happen. Let me go back. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> well, we have the site plan and then um, the folks. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the new MOU with the county okay. on referrals. And it's been changed somewhat. So now, if, uh, if this is within 500 feet of the uh, state road, yeah. and it is, Which it is. Uh, then it's exempt from referral. If, um, is the reuse of existing structures? No, not reuse. Uh, re occupancy or reuse of existing structures? So I guess that means that there's no change to the existing structure. Yeah. Uh, so there is a change, so that doesn't qualify there. Accessory apartment signage that meets local zoning and wireless telecommunications. Can you speak a little louder? Oh. Okay, so I'm just going through the possible exemptions we, from referral. We have um, a memorandum of understanding with the county as most municipalities within the county do. There's a, a general municipal law in, in the state code that says that certain items that come before us have to go to the county for their yes, recognition yeah. approval. Right. I'm sorry, you were right. It does have to be referred. And, um, and we have a, in, in this memorandum of understanding, there are certain items that fall under an exempt category. Right. That means it doesn't have to go there. Right. Your application does not. Good. It, no, it has oh. to go. It is not exempt. <laughs> it's not exempt. It's not exempt. <laughs> we we hoped that the new one that we just got might have included this, but it it is not exempt. So we will have to go to the county for their review. What is the point that makes it not exempt? Reoccupancy or reuse of existing facility. 
There's a number of subheadings, but that's not what this is. What was that? If, if, you, if you were changing the use of an existing facility right. and several other conditions, it would not have to go to the county. I just thought that that might apply, but it doesn't apply. No. Because you're, it's not an existing facility, it's going to be a changed facility. No. Okay. Okay, okay so um, we have received since our last meeting um, a certification from the board of managers of your condominiums that authorizes you to um, apply for the building permit. It doesn't say site plan, but I'm assuming that that's good enough, right? Mm -hmm. The wording. So that's one thing that was missing. And the first application did not have the CICRA uh, part filled out, and the new application does. So would anybody like to ask questions or do we want to hear again what they're doing and why they're doing it? Everybody remembers that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any questions from any members? Yeah. Comments on the application? Mr. Stephan? I just I still just don't understand why it's in front of us if this is a repair and not a change to the site plan. Because it is a change. It's a it's it's a larger deck than was there. But well, it's also supported now. It's, it's supposed to be different. Candy. It's a different design. Okay. It looks different. Which is one of the issues with the site plan is, is the appearance of the building. They change the appearance. Okay, so that's an approved site plan that requires some change. The, therefore it's a change to the site plan. Um, seems so simple, right? It seems so simple. I know. Yeah. Um, the only question I had was the photographs you included, these are the decks you're replacing? This, yeah, those are the 61. And okay, so these are these are coming down and the new ones are being installed. As far as we understood, we are rebuilding those, basically. I mean, each replacing the right. system there with a different one and making up to code. But no, I understand. I say your charities, whatever they are. Well, the only reason I <laughs> asked is that I thought at our last meeting you had indicated that the design currently was that these were cantilevered out of the yeah, building that's right. and not with posts, but these have, well, but uh, these have four by fours. That's the there. problem. <laughs> They've been generally reading it for 40 years. I see. Okay, and we want to replace it okay. with proper structure. Okay. It's really gotten to the point where it's dangerous. Uh, no, I don't deny mm -hmm. that. I was, I was actually asking to try to get this yeah. all fair table and get you down to the building. And are there, but I, I don't see that I can. Well, well, that's well, that's no, I understand. Right, right, right. And yeah. so it's allowed. No, I understand. What you're doing, though, is, is the right thing to do. I mean, those columns there were put it because they can't deliver one that's strong enough. Yeah, no, I understand. So put right. those there, and they're not good anymore, so we'll do it. Yes, it's okay. Fair enough. Other than that, that, the columns that we put in never had footings on them. Right. They're and resting yeah. on the sidewalk. Yeah. But that's another story. Yeah. That's right. You had a and question. is not the new deck larger than the existing one? It only extends out one foot so because the other ones are, if you look at the photograph you'll see they're really not usable right. and what they okay. do i understand i'm just yeah. asking yeah. if they're larger I understand. Yeah. So if they're larger than but, but actually okay. what you could say is the columns that come down are in the same location as the others so footprint wise really you could say we have an enlarged right right okay right. okay uh, Michael, did you have any other? No, that's it. Mr. Litton. Oh, um, would, would, would you mention your, uh, your concern, John? Yeah, I want to know if I should recuse myself. I own a condominium within that group of town and country, but it is not affected by these items. Right. So this is one of the ones that's... Uh, right. Sure. I think, yeah, we have another. We have three. Yes. Yeah, no, I think you should accuse yourself just because you okay. have a financial interest in the complex. Okay. So, you, you can just sit there, just here. What's the last thing? Yeah, okay. Might as well listen to it, John. Yeah. That's you. <laughs> okay, so, um, which comes first, George? Do we determine the completeness? Do we vote yeah. on the completeness? Yeah. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to determine this application now be complete? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 
Um, and the next is Seeker. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's do when we have the uh, 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 so so meet until it meets tomorrow night on January sixth, I think. Um, I forgot the date. It was rescheduled from January first. So they made it later in that week. I don't remember the new date. That's the first week of January. <coughs> Would this help? No. No? Okay. So we can't act until January. Uh, the second meeting of January. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of yeah, timing. Yeah. Too bad. As usual. Okay. <laughs> bad timing. Timing is, yeah. So, um, okay. So, shall we make. So we have a motion then to uh, schedule a public hearing for it would be January twenty third seventh fourteen is twenty one right January twenty one um, schedule a public hearing for our second meeting in January January twenty first two thousand fourteen. Subject to receipt of uh, the County Planning Board recommendation. So moved. Second. Uh, well, you're you're going to vote public hearing in any case, aren't you? On that, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we, that's right. That's fine. fine. Right so, get so we don't have to have a subject to. Okay. Is that right? Sure. So. We have a motion to, uh, I withdraw that first motion. We have a motion, I, I can't withdraw it because you did it, but whoever. Here we go. We have a motion to uh, schedule a public hearing for January 21st. Yes, so moved. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we are done for this evening. And, and you to the county. You want to just do that. Uh, do you need a motion for that? I don't think so. I think it's just there. No, no. Okay. It's just there. Yeah, it's Michael on the other side. The increase in sizes of the decks, we don't have any problems here with setbacks with the increases. No, it, it's, it's in the. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's no. Uh, where it's facing, there's no. Yeah, there's no other buildings. Yeah, I know. And the actual. Yeah, because we're not doing a site plan approval, right? No, well, well, we it's an amendment. Right. It's an amendment. Right. Plan, yeah. uh, Rich, do we have the original site plan? I don't know if we have the original site plan. We can get that in the building. Yeah, we need that for reference so we know what we're amending. Just can we get it eventually uh, before January? Well, we'll have it for our next meeting. Yeah. That'd be good. <coughs> I have a site plan that shows the locations of the decks, and I guarantee you there's no possible way it could affect setbacks. I, I understand yeah, that, but that. that's enough. That's the original? No. No, no. no. That's the new one? No, this okay. is the large one. Okay, the we wanted to see the original site plan drawing, whatever we have on file. We would like to. Okay. I never see it. <laughs> If you find something on file, that you, you're better than I. I'm the winner. Right. <laughs> okay. Who would like that? I got this. How many years ago was it approved? Do you know? Um, was it part of the original, original. the original building? So Mauricio, looking for the original building plan. Whatever. Yeah, we, I, I'd like to look at the building file with, with Rich um, when he's back next week, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll look at it with him. But in the meantime, you can you can make a note to ask him. Um, to have that whatever we can find available. Okay. So we can see if we have anything and look at the amendment based on that. And we'll look at that next week then. Next meeting, sorry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks thank you very much. Floyd, you need more time? No. We can uh, talk baseball. Mm -hmm. 
83 days till spring training. Just <laughs> <laughs> 83? Yeah. No, I'm detecting the chair? No, no, no. Is she still with you? <laughs> Come on up, Floyd. I'm ready for spring training. Yeah, me too. Okay. So the story is we um, opened a public hearing last meeting and we adjourned it for to be continued. We continued it until this evening. So may I have a motion to uh, reopen the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Welcome back. To Thank you. It feels good. Okay, good. <laughs> so, Mr. Niffin, you have in front of you reports that we were waiting for last time, one from the fire department and one from uh, Blue Terwilliger, the uh, DPW head, and you have had a chance to look through them. Yes. I have not. I, these came in, uh, actually the fire department one I did look at. Mm -hmm. Blue's I looked at briefly, but I was overwhelmed by its detail. I was wondering if you have any sense that you've made of it. <clears throat> yeah, do you want me to start with the fire department first? Sure. Um, essentially, everything on here we, I talked to the uh, fire department about right. and would um, plan on showing either these as notes or include on the drawings. Okay. If, if and when preliminary plan is approved, to show it on the final plan. Yeah. I think you could just take each of those three main paragraphs and put them on your plan. Sure. Yes. Okay. That would take care of you. Okay. So and that's easy. Uh, just, just the um, modified hammerhead at the end. Yeah. Would have to change. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to go into anything more on that one? Or? Anybody have any mm -hmm. comments or questions about it? No. no. Good. Let's move on for it. Okay. We're doing so well so far. Uh, with Blue's letter, I, I mean, I'm okay with everything he shows on or has written here, except that I think he may uh, the the right of way or the easement for the forest sewer main. That's oops, that's not on village property. Um, I don't I don't know if, is that I don't think it was intended to be a village right of way. Just an, uh, an easement for the parties that are sharing it. Well, I think that's why he's getting into this detail of having a 12 foot wide gravel right. road. Right. So that's that really number two. Yeah, that's yeah, cutting right two. through the middle of what would be the preserve. You talking about item two? Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or just the whole letter in general. Okay. So describe then. Why don't you back up and describe the system that you plan to put in? So which which part is private and which part? You know, well, the, the whole, my understanding is the whole thing is private. Well, when, when we tie into the village, then I guess it's still private, but it's on village property. And by tie into the village, you mean the pumping station? Into the, the um, into the manhole, the sanitary manhole. Okay. Is where we're tying into. It's just a gravity manhole. We've done it before. You just get a permit. Right. And you tie your service into a manhole. And that's... Um, where, where is that located? Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's right in front of the sewer pump station. There's a gravity manhole. In the street? Yeah. Uh, or no, it's no, it's, off, it's off the street. Okay. But on village mm -hmm. property. Right. Okay. And and what is the so it's going to go under the preserve? So, yeah, it's going to go under the street. Under the preserve. But it's, it goes through the preserve. So. Like I said, I don't really have any issues except that he's proposing a 12 foot wide gravel road. Which would go into a preserve? Well, as a village taxpayer, I'd have an issue. Because I don't think the village should be owning the sewer line that goes to right. three private residences. Right. So that, that's where I think. I mean, if you took a look at you know, my house on Caroline Way, we have three houses tied into one line and then into the public system. Yeah. The system village is responsible for the village's part of that. Right. But the private lines are private. They go down and we fix them. Right. They, they go down and we fix them. They approve the hookup. They approve the, hook up. Right. They approve the capacity for that manhole to take that much. Right. They approve us coming into their manhole. Mm -hmm. But they're not taking responsibility 
before those times. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. So to set it up yeah. like this, when I read through this, I saw it taking up 20 foot easement with a 12 foot gravel service road. It's like. Yeah, no, I agree. So that. Is, is there a, a street that will be dedicated that this will cross or? Nothing no, 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 it's okay. all on private property. It all it will all remain on private property except for the maybe fifteen feet where it goes onto the village owned property. Which is where which, which is, is right property. in the front. If you look at the blow up, oh you got on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right down where your finger just pointed. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you look at the the blow up here, uh, the blow up is of this area. Mm -hmm. right. And you come in and then we hang a right. The whole thing is on private property except for that. How do you go under the street? I guess we'll have to jack under it. Okay, but you are actually going under the street? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what the bedrock issue is there. Some spots the bedrock, you know. It's uh, mm -hmm. more of a cascading stream. It's still bedrock. Right. I don't believe it's bedrock there. Well, maybe it's a sewer line. The freeze issue is not as no, it's big. Probably, yeah, it's more right. Okay. So, so what's the issue then? That um, what? It's called well, when, when I first read the letter, I read it briefly because it just came through this email mm -hmm. this afternoon. It looked like the village was going to own this new line going all the way back to these houses. I'm thinking, you know, why should the village? But that's not our intent. That's not, no, that's yeah. not my intent. And maybe right. may have thought that this is going to be something that gets dedicated to the village. Right. right? So who will own it? The property owners. And that'll be all part of that uh, maintenance agreement that we'll have to uh, submit. Right. You know, along with the road and everything else, that'll all be one document. So you'll need to get a permit from the village to tie into the... Yes. That's typically that's how it. that would occur. Except that he's saying differently, but I, I just would like to, you know, talk to him about what he's, how he's interpreting this. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. That is, you know, I don't. But if it has to be public, then you know, then that's what he's saying. But if it doesn't have to be, it sounds like private would be more amenable to the board here. I mean, it's actually more amenable yeah. to me as a taxpayer. That, that you it makes sense. We have a trustee here, you know. I don't quite understand how. So, is it going to be owned by each property owner as it moves along? So that that stretch there will be owned by this owner and stretch into this owner and so on? Uh, no, well, don't have an easement. No. These lots so here right, will so collectively have an easement along here. Um, you know, no different than a driveway easement. And they'll have a maintenance agreement that they still are required to share in the cost of any maintenance or repairs right. of that. Right. Um, but that's, you know, a private agreement um, that's shared amongst these residences, not. Right. But the, the actual pipeline is owned by these property owners because it goes across the property? Here it will be, yes, but when they tie into here, it's owned collectively. Owned collectively. Well, this property. It's going to be owned by the owner. Right. This property will be providing an easement for them to have this right. Yeah. It's more than a driveway right away. It's for the driveway maintenance again. But you're actually talking about maintaining the sewer system. Um, although there's no treatment plan, right? There's Correct. It's just no treatment at all. It's just a discharge, a collection discharge. So it's collectively owned collection system, which will be discharging to a village. Uh, system. And maybe Blue has an issue with that, but you know, he doesn't say yeah. that he's interpreting it as private and he wants it to be public. He's just, you know, making a statement. So he's assuming it's public. It, it seems guess. like it. It seems like it, you know, with the requirement for village access. Right. It's both mm -hmm. gravel and, you know. On the other hand, the number one seems to be the neutral. I mean, number right. one would be no matter what it is, number three uh, is talking about the pump station as it's pumping into their system. I mean, where's the pump station? Yeah, that was my question. Too. For you. You have uh, it's right here. The one up farther up the so line here. Farther up the road. Um, the pump station. There. So that. Okay. Must be good pump control mode generator. 
again, he's thinking of his own, but maybe he's not thinking of his own man because they would want to make sure that that pump station has the emergency generator, et cetera, meeting their standards so that the sanitary system works. So th maybe it's just this discussion. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I'm. But if, if he is willing to accept it as a private system, then which of these applies to a private system? Um, I think the only one that comes out is number two. Yeah. Right. Everything else is. Yeah, they, they may apply to, a, to the boat. private system. Yeah. Well, except for the bond. But maybe he is seeing it as a private, but that he's he's feeling that he needs a right of way along all of it. And I don't know why he would want a right of way. Why he would even want the liability of being in there to, right. but maybe there's a reason behind it. And I don't know any other instances. I don't instances. know this section of code. So, um, I, just, I was just looking it up and it wasn't really clear. Yes. Yeah. So, I don't know if you well, I think, uh, Floyd, you should talk to Blue. Mm -hmm. And after you're done, I'll speak with him. And maybe he can send us another letter clarifying or sure. correcting this so that by the next meeting we'll have something we can act on. Is that something, George, or do we need more? Yeah, no, I, I, we need more information. And then I, you know, I, I've not seen this done quite this way before. Usually, you know, there's a formation of transportation corporation actually own the system, own the conveyance and so on. And that seems like overkill for this, for sure. But, but it is an unusual system when everybody's sharing it and it comes into, into one uh, municipal system. Well, I mean, we, we, controls it. we've done that with water, <coughs> where it's a shared water line mm -hmm. along a driveway. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, so it's a shared utility, basically. And with that, again, it's just a, a maintenance agreement between the owners. Just cross, cross agreements. Basically, yeah, I mean, it's just a, you know, there's the easement through each person's lot, and there's the agreement that, you know, if there's any issues or need for repair, that it would be shared in a certain percentage. The village has kind of made it clear over the years that they own from their system out, mm -hmm. and the private homeowner owns from their system back to the house. Mm -hmm. right. Right from the but plane. Blue does have restrictions. <coughs> if I'm going to put in a brand new house, he has a requirement on what kind of copper pipe I yeah. have to use. Right. And even if I want to use some sort of poly, he can shake his head and say, no, it'll be a copper pipe. Right. In, in the house, one on the house. To my line, but yeah. he can't what, what he into, yeah. So I mean, he could specify what he might want here. But I don't think the village is looking at owning any. Yeah, I think that's true. So if it's private, but I, I'm just hung up on how it's privately owned. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. If a developer was there, a developer would own it. But the developer's gone, so I understand the rights of way and maintenance. But just the question of ownership. So that. Why do you think the developer? Uh, well, three lots. You're going to sell the three lots, uh, right? When you the developer owns one of the lots, but I mean, you're not going to you're not going to continue to own this. Floyd will not own this pipeline right. and get rights away. No, I mean, I live on one of the. I mean, I live on this lot in which it's going to have a, a, it's going to have some share to the driveway agreement. Is there anything else that's jointly owned? I mean, because that's what it's coming down to. These four lots will jointly own this pipeline, uh, and they will get an easement across this property, and they will get an easement across this property. Uh, jointly, uh, it's, it's like a homeowners association. Right. It's going to own a swimming pool, you know, right. so to get into. So how do we deal with it when it crosses this other lot, uh, 14, and then comes into lot 27 and crosses that? And it doesn't 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 go on to 27. It just stays on the lot 17. Oh, it stays on 17. Yeah, yeah, order 17. So that will be an easement granted by 17. Right. 17 have responsibility for it too. Uh, 17 wouldn't need to because they can do it direct filing. Right, so they don't need to use it. So, is that a billable lot? Uh, it would be. Uh, is that a plan? Um, it would be something I would envision maybe having to go for site plan people to do something in the future. I'm not proposing to put a house in it. Okay. I don't so know what I would. Just in terms of the impact. 
if stuff has to get cut out. Right. Yeah. Cut out 30 years from now. So the cost is 14 or 17. But 14 being the best. Yes. And 17. So as that goes across those two lots, who's the easement granted to? To these four lot owners? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is that it seems like there needs to be an entry the homeowners association by these four that own this system. They're the reason it's across here. They share all the responsibility. If there's a problem, and, and the village has to come back to, to somebody about the problem is breaking down the your system, they come back to the homeowners association. That might be what's needed here. As I ask if there's anything else that they own commonly, I guess not. Just the driveway. The driveway is just the road maintenance again, but um, they're not going to own the driveway. No, the driveway. no, no. It's, it's, that's the difference. No, but they own the driveway. But this is actually a, a pipeline. It, it's a collection system that needs to be owned by somebody. Um, I mean, in the driveway. I mean, they own the driveway. It's, granted, it's gravel, but you know, they all have rights to, and they all have to pay to maintain it. So, I mean, whether it's a rock or a piece of pipe. I, I personally don't see the difference. I mean, I understand that there's mechanicals involved. And well, it's when it gets into lot 14 and lot 17 that you start to see the issue. There. Right, because it goes off of their property. Yeah, so. and now, now they have something on someone else's property that they need an easement for. So if you forget the HOA and just say the easement would be granted to the four homeowners individually as a group in some fashion. Uh, and then when you get to the village, Who's the village agreeing with? Like if you had a single family home, you get an agreement with the village to put the stuff into the village system and make charge you whatever. See, I don't know if the village needs an agreement, it's more just a permit at that point. Okay, so this is a permit issue too. Yeah, it's a permit and a bond as well. Well, he's already stated the bond amount, but right. the bond's so, you, so you're trying to make a distinction between an agreement between they would say go with the the deed for each of those properties right. as opposed to a single entity that encompasses all of them. And yeah, see, when the driveway's on their properties, it's just we agree to maintain it. Sure. When it goes off the property, when this thing goes off the property, these four guys have to agree with somebody else. And so it, it becomes something that they all collectively have liability for something right. else. It's, it's just. You couldn't even really form a partnership. I mean, for your own protection, you probably need some, something like a homeowners association that would formalize what that relationship is. And then you as a group can deal with these two property owners and with the village, which will need a permit, which will need a bond, and which may have enforcement issues someday. Okay. So it's just a, a legal but the talk, yeah. a legal. We talked to the uh, DPW about that, about what they want. They're going to try to do. They need to have a single entity to deal with. If you had four pipelines coming down, it'd be easier. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, everybody could have their own pipeline. And right, and it could. So. I mean, it conceivably, it could be a, a pump in each house, pumping individually. Yeah, I'm not suggesting it. I'm just saying this thing right. is when you combine it, suddenly you have an entity. That question about who is it we're dealing with. So the mechanic of the system is it's a force main until it gets to the manhole? But yeah, it's, a, it's gravity fed from each house to this to, uh, pump. to a pump station. And then, and then from here it's pumped up oh. to there. Okay. Um, I, it's not really, I don't think we're necessarily, the net is not enough, but you know, it's, it's doing this. Right. So that's why there's the need for the okay. pumping. Right. Yes. Has that been designed by engineers this point, pump station? Uh, yes. Um, he, hasn't, he hasn't done it in full yet, but it's an engineer that I drew that. Well, that is an engineer and surveyor. If the net's not up, you should be able to pump. If it's siphoned. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's, as long as there's it's no gray water. If, I know it's flowing. As long as it's flowing, right? If it's an open system, then yes, you'll need some way to pull it either side from the pump. It's only four ohms. It's not near city first. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to live there, yeah. <laughs> right. no, that, that's true. All right. It may be a couple of years, but it's, it's close. But the, yeah. the fact is that but it's doing that. That's why it's. Okay. Well, sure. yeah, I would, I would rather it not, the <laughs> bills not have to put up. Chair sure, recognizes. Right away. <laughs> This is just a question uh, from the point of view of the village. Um, if something goes amiss with the pumping station and uh, that renders uh, the housing that uh, will be feeding that station, if you'll forgive the analogy yeah. of feeding, uh, who is responsible for uh, the damage to the housing uh, that results from the backing up of uh, sewage into the house. Is the, does the village have any responsibility or is the ownership so clearly that of the housing, the, the occupants and owners of the housing, that the village has no liability? I mean, now maybe this is a question for the attorney, or, but I think Floyd must have thought about this as well. The village has no liability regardless of where the backup is. If it's in the village's main and it backs up into your house, I don't see the village ever having like no, This is why you have attorneys. My feeling is if the village caused it, the village pays for it. If the village causes a problem, it wasn't there for me, the village is going to be responsible. Yeah. And the scene the pump station if it, the private pump station yeah. fails, so the village has, the has no responsibility. Uh, the way I read Blue's uh, message, if you'll forgive me, I'll follow up to this, I hope. The way I read that was that the village might have some responsibility for maintenance, not that they would own it, but that they'd have some responsibility for maintenance. If something goes amiss and the village has some responsibility for maintenance, is the village responsible? Now, this is a question of the water district regulations, that the sewer district, rather. Here, I mean, this is all in the sewer district, right? You're all in the sewer district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are regulations and rules yes. in the sewer district. So I haven't read those. I have to, and it's worth taking a look at that very closely. I would suggest that that's the main uh, interest that I would carry back to the village board about this discussion, that it's unclear whether the village would have any responsibility at all. If the village has no responsibility, then decide upon it. I mean, we have a three-lot subdivision within proximity of this that's done just like this. Three houses tied into one catch basin. What do they do in terms of owning it? And the village is responsible from the cat from, the, from their spot on. But as for the rest of the lines going back to the houses, they're clearly all home, uh, homeowners. Is that an association? Nope. Nope. Like we were making this one line. No, no, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the three houses have cross agreements with each other. Not so he's asking, is it the same like sewer line? Or is it three, 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 separate, separate, three separate lines? Okay. Uh, just, just to answer, Trustee, um, the village, I, I think Blues may be interpreting this as that it would be. Um, built and then dedicated to the village, and then he wouldn't need this permanent. But if it's not being dedicated to the village, I don't know why he would even want access, other than knowing that there is access in case there's an issue to protect these lot owners. Mm -hmm. So that may be the only reason why I think he wants it, but um, just to pose this question to you all, would you like there to be a gravel road, or would you like there not to be a gravel road? Because I think the gravel road is the part to me that's obtrusive here, you know, having this gravel road going through all this. Well, yeah. Any, any machine that's going to repair it's not going to need gravel. It's not going to pick up truck driver in there to fix it. It's going to be a. Right. I think once you settle the question of the ownership, you're going to settle the question of who's going to do the repair. And the repair, I think, is going to come down to the homeowners, not the village. And therefore, the gravel road is going to be whatever the homeowners decide they need. Just as a point of information, I'm looking at the section of code that Blue referenced, 16340B, which is called Entry on Private Property Easements. And it describes the circumstances authorizing entry. 
um, superintendent shall be permitted to enter upon private properties through which the village has been granted a duly executed easement for the repair or replacement of a sanitary or stormwater sewer line which has been so damaged or obstructed to create an imminent threat to public health or welfare which requires corrective action. So, yeah. Does it suggest that the that the property is not owned by the village, but that the the system is owned by the village? Makes it sound like the, vill the village has a lot of its sewer. Having once been the trustee in charge of sewer, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a dubious honor. Know that, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of village property that be sewers going here, across though. it. Mm -hmm. That you know the. the Property owners don't own the village owner. Right. Uh, a lot of them. Everybody, you know, you mean the sewer, the village sewers on private Village sewer lines right. go through right. or right. under right. people's houses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's, so that's, that's what that's that sounds interesting. like. Yeah. But this is, this is. I, I, I'm reading it to Maurice, and well, if you go down to uh, paragraph B. Yeah. Um, his issue may be that if there's an issue there that the sewer could overflow and it poses a an issue to public health, and I think that's why he's wanting the access. Right. Well, let's we'll ask him. Yeah. That would be my guess, my suggestion. Okay. Um, Can I bring up one more time the question of, did you put a private septic system on these? Uh, yes. But it would require a lot more clearing trees and so I'm trying to prevent it. It's not always. It's also in the village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We so far fall enough away from the uh, sewer line. Oh, oh, I see. I mean, the, the environmental hazards of, of having to deal with going under the stream, yeah. possible this this thing blowing a gasket someday, spewing all over. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk. I'm putting in a new engineered system on a lot over on Juniper Street. One of these little. Uh, that's much smaller. It's made of corrugated cardboard. Um, <laughs> be, but. Because of the size of it and that it's under five lots, it wouldn't be required to be like the big engineered systems with the uh, air reserves that have to be approved in advance. And because it's under five lots, it could just be shown up <coughs> right. and then get approval as they're built. So I can talk to the engineer again. I mean, if this is all required, maybe it makes, maybe it does make sense to go back to yeah. septic. If you're concerned about cutting down trees and not getting for it. Right. I mean, it's, you, I mean, it's not always environmental. <laughs> right. I never envisioned that <laughs> no, I, when I would have this. So, right. And I, and I, you know, and this actually is probably more important than what you would be cutting down. Right. In terms oh, of oh, the integrity oh. of the whole preserve. Okay. Fair enough. Good point. That's why they take the big bucks on that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I didn't know you had that previous. Uh, <laughs> but you can't go on that ever again. <laughs> you know, you know, it's like being a pack rat. You never know what's going to come in handy, right? Maybe we can call you Norton. We used to have two old <laughs> trustees that used to show up at every project we did. We were like the two guys, every old Muppet that used to sit up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they told me, yeah. When are you going to tell me the pipe's over there? Yeah. What's the date of this one? Yeah. Uh, this was my latest submission. It was uh, uh, in November 12th. Be, uh, my, uh, you can be the Norton of your friend. Bruce's father. So I will talk to Blue, but I'll talk to the engineer about maybe showing some things on here and eliminating all this. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, you I, could have one common septic. I think it would be easier to write an agreement for a common septic than it would be to write the agreement. Sure, it would be. And that would be, yeah, but the common septic would then be within an area that would normally not get any kind of, and it's, it's not the best area, I think. For drainage? Put it on your part. We have options, I guess. Well, I got one there already. I mean, the gravels, I mean, the, the soils are good. They're, they're gravelly. You know, I had an in ground, which is not normal in New Falls. Right. So, you know, it's, it's gravelly soil. So, okay. Um, I think I'm going to take that one. All right. Any other points we need for, for next time? No. Okay, so we need yes, and yes, you may. So we need to um, 
A motion to continue the public hearing at our next meeting. So moved. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for coming, Floyd. Yeah, thanks. Thank I keep you forgetting you're a lefty too. Uh, lefty, lefty. Beautiful thing. Okay. I live with it. Every so often I'll take a way to let them out. Oh, no. It goes to point where you can have My wife got left handed labels and. Can you use one? The spout from Iowa. Oh, you are? No. Oh, God. Yes, sir. I can do this. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Inspired. Yeah. Hello. Um, you guys need these back at all? Uh, no, you can have them. Thanks. Great. We'll probably talk to you on Friday in the mail. Okay. Um, does everybody have a copy of the minutes that are on the agenda for approval? See, who wasn't here? Michael, you were not here. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth is not here. We cannot approve the. Cannot approve. Why? Yes, we can. John, Rich, and myself will uh, do the deed. Okay. John and Rich, do you have any comments or? No. Okay, we have a motion to accept the draft minutes of November 5th, 2015. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the only thing remaining that I know of is a discussion to continue on the uh, <coughs> zoning change that Mr. Stephens has requested of the village board. And I asked uh, George to send us uh, his memos. All right. I've already had to note my left board. Okay. And he turned his nameplate face down. Face down. <clears throat> so, um, is this it? No. I have it here. Okay. There it is. Okay. Have either of you had a chance to look at it? No, it's just it no. came, okay. came around 6 o'clock today. Mm -hmm. George, could, could you give us sort of, sort of a summary? I, I asked George to tell us how to continue, what we need to do, what for, because we've never done this before. So, so I don't know. Well, we, we haven't done a remapping. But we see now there's only in that in the court and the court summons. But uh, one of the uh, questions here is really who's who's going to take the lead as a board? It could either be the village board, which has to ultimately amend the zoning law to adopt a new zoning district or change the zoning district if this is going to go forward, or it could be the planning board sending the recommendation to the village board to do that. Um, so that's to be worked out. And last time it came, the first time I came here, I said this should go to the village board. They're going to be in Benny. They sent it back here right. to say, well, what do you think? So we don't really have, other than verbally, uh, discussion saying that uh, Rich would like to to see. I think it's four lots. Four lots rezoned in the gateway. Uh, we don't really have a, a written proposal, do we? That, I don't think so. We no. no. Okay. So this is still sort of a discussion phase. Right. And uh, I've listed what I have in my file, which is right here. It's just very few pages. Uh, I've got the, the draft minutes from the village board sending it back here. I've got uh, Rich's email earlier, back in September, saying he wanted to replace this building at 15 Water Street with the same with the residents, single family residents, but not change the use. Uh, I want to expand on the residential use of it. Well, it's it's good. still residential use. Right. And uh, then an email to this board pointing out the change in the zoning district would not change the building code restrictions required by FEMA, would not be spot zoning, and would not 
could would change, but would change the permitted uses without changing the underlying restrictions on construction. Uh, and and that, that can all be true. Uh, in the memo from Jordan Baldino back in 2010, when he looked at 11 Water Street and said that it was not in the 100 or 500 year floodplain. Well, that's, that's relevant, but we need to have much more information really to understand how all four lots are affected by the flood maps that are out today. <coughs> they were all revised and released again this year. Um, so what I said in these 10 points was first determine what properties are involved, three or four, I guess it's four. Uh, contact the owners to see whether the owners support this and whether they want to participate at all in the discussion of a possible rezoning. I assume they would. Uh, secondly, review the comprehensive plan to see how this fits with the comprehensive plan. Uh, presumably, that flood district was set up consistent with some comprehensive plan in the past, and it may be necessary to amend the plan in order to change the zoning here. That needs to be looked at. Um, we need to review the history of the flood zone designation, whether it was done to comply with FEMA requirements. And say a little bit more about that. What FEMA says is if you want to have flood insurance in your municipality, you have to have proper zoning or other floodplain laws that will control development so that we minimize development in the flood zone. Uh, and they define the flood zone in the wrong way. And that's determined by the maps that come out periodically. So uh, if you don't do that, you, you can't participate in the National Flood Insurance Program and you can't get insurance. Uh, and they're using that as the carrot and stick to get, and of course there's some subsidies for insurance. So they're using that as the carrot and stick to make municipalities change their zoning to stay or try to minimize development in the flood zone. And this flood zone as Rich was saying, it allows only agricultural uses and some recreational uses of various kinds. Sounds like the kind of flood district zoning that was put in place because FEMA said you had to. It needs to be looked into. I just don't know. I haven't looked into that. I don't know what the answer is. The new FEMA maps are out, so we should review those to see whether that's changed and maybe it's all receded. What was there 10, 20 years ago is going away. We don't know. Uh, and we should talk, to, or somebody should talk to DEC. This, DEC administers the flood program in New York State. Uh, that's they implement the FEMA maps mm -hmm. by working with municipalities to change their zoning. So, if nothing else, we should talk to the guy at DEC who does that work. He's a small staff of them, and he could tell us quickly whether this is okay with them. <coughs> if all of the above is favorable, I said determine. Who's proposing the change? The village board or planning board, just for procedure? Who's going to take the next step? And one of us has to then draft, unless Rich does it or somebody else does it, draft an actual map. It would be the formal map for the zoning change. Uh, do an environmental assessment of that map, of that change. Um, look at whether the comprehensive plan has to be amended. If it does, propose that change and then send that package off to the county planning board. Uh, I think there should be a rational a rationale statement. Why is this being done? That makes sense for the company's planning terms. It's done to enlarge the gateway district. Why is that being done? Why this area is not a you know, mutual planning analysis? And then hold a public hearing is the last step. Uh, <coughs> So it ended up being 10 steps. But uh, that, that's as far as I can go. I mean, the rest of it's a lot of work. I mean, <laughs> uh, the, I mean it's, and if, if this was being done to allow a project to go forward, usually the person who's through the project would do all that work right. and propose with uh, you know, documents to support the change. And then the seeker would include, I mean, it seems like, oh, that's no big issue. But, See if we can include whatever changes going to be done. So it's just a matter of getting the building permit after the change. But if, if the applicant isn't doing it, if the village wants to do it, the village would have to do that work here with the village board. It seems like the village board punted back to us. Uh, I'm not looking at the minutes uh, of that meeting, but my recollection is that the village board uh, requested of you uh, an, an opinion. 
it didn't uh, require of you to write uh, any new legislation as draft legislation for the village. But it, it said, that, okay, the idea is coming from here, and what you know, you're sending it to us. Well, well, what do you what do you think of it? What is your opinion about this uh, change in zoning? And if, if the, you believe that this is a warranted change or even a strongly recommended change, then it's up to the village board, I think, to go ahead and take the next steps in drafting legislation that would allows this to go on. I think of it differently than the way you presented it, Tom, because I thought that Rich presented it to us. And we told him he should make his case to the village board. We didn't say anything. We didn't apply to the village board or say that we think it's a good idea, bad idea, or anything like that. <clears throat> and um, I'm, I'm a little daunted by the amount of work that we would have to do. Uh, not that it's that difficult, but um, I don't. I, to me, it seems like. Rich has to be the energy center here, yeah. and I think his work has to go first to the village board to see if they really want to do this. Now, they've asked us for our opinion, but we need the information that George has outlined before we can even begin to say, yeah, we think that's a good idea, I think. I mean, well, that's, why, that's, that's, that's the idea, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how else you'd make an opinion on it other than just off the top of your head saying, Right. Sure. Sounds good to me. Yeah. But I'm going to be attending a seminar tomorrow night given by FEMA. And it has to do with just this, with municipalities and the new changes. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to come back and do information on that. Um, and I have several times tried to contact the boys at the block, but everybody is scheduled with hunting season. And Thanksgiving <laughs> makes it difficult. Black Friday. And Black Friday. And Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. And Donate Tuesday, which everybody, you know, can get on board with. Right? Donate Saturday. Tuesday. And November. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Zerler, I'd like to expand upon the face you were making before to see if there was any. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I didn't realize I was caught. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure which face we we're referring to. Well, whichever one you were uh, uh, conscious of. Sure. Um, no, I think actually George's outline is a good map to follow, and it seems as if the first few steps, which you've started to try to do, right? Uh, to determine if it's even an option in terms of what DEC allows and flood insurance. If you can't get past that step, then there's not much point going further. Right. Uh, if you can, I certainly think it's worth pursuing. Um, I think the rationale is, is you've presented to us is sensible and worth considering. Um, I think the, they're underutilized properties. The comprehensive plan piece. I'm not so concerned about that. Good. I am. I, I think. I mean. I think as as the, I think zoning law has to be driven by that. No, Doesn't I agree with that. But I'm not so concerned about that. If in fact we're going to be modifying our comprehensive plan, oh, sure. Then I feel less concerned about the existing plan as opposed to you know is it is this of interest? Then let's make sure that that's acknowledged in an updated plan. Just need to synchronize them. Yes. I no, I agree with your point totally. Okay. Yes. My okay. wife feels I bought Baltic Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> is this you did. Is one of those properties in New Paltz that I don't know if it ever was given much consideration. Yeah. <laughs> the elevation numbers qualified it and that's what it was, but in reality it's 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 worth a second look at. Why did you listen to her when you bought it? <laughs> I mean, hello. She's got her own business. Okay. <laughs> okay, so do you have enough to uh, keep you busy? I'm, you know, I'm going to the meeting tomorrow night. Okay, back whatever I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, okay, you can come back now. I'm back. Okay, um, anybody have anything else to? May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you.
All in favor? Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, ladies of PIG. I will not spell. I pronounce it. I appreciate you. Put you three down for an A.